Right, hello stage two chemistry students. It's at this point, uh, now that you've watched the Sticky Sausages non-Sticky Balls movie, that you need to turn to page 159, read through uh, 160 and 161, and then have a crack at the questions on 162. At the end of the day, melting point and boiling point are the result of a variety of factors, but predominantly it's got to do with how heavy and large a molecule is and the secondary bonding interactions that occur. And of course, as I've said before, if you're a non-polar molecule, the only thing that's available to you is dispersion forces, which doesn't take much to overcome. However, if you're a very, very long non-polar molecule that has flexibility and ability to touch other very, very long non-polar molecules, remember, sticky sausage, non-sticky bowls, then you're going to have way more van der Waals forces and therefore you're going to require additional thermal energy to overcome them so you're going to have a higher melting point and a higher boiling point. But it also comes down to how heavy something is too. So if you think of the situation where if you go to kick a soccer ball with all the force you can muster, then you could probably launch it. Whereas if you did the same for a bowling ball, it wouldn't go very far and you'd break your foot. See, it takes a lot more energy to get something moving, which is a lot larger. So at the atomic level, that plays into it too. So if you've got sticky sausage, non-sticky balls, and they're really heavy, sticky sausages, then it's going to take a lot of thermal energy to get them to melt or turn into a gas.